Hi, this is Adele, and welcome to the third video of this workshop series. And this is about breaking through the barriers that hold you back as an artist. And let me just do a quick recap. We've done two videos already, and the first one is about the time limits that you might feel restricted by, whether you only have a little bit of time in the studio or the time of being older in life and thinking you can't learn something new. And I've told you before, many times, it happened to me, so it can happen to you. I started a YouTube channel at 65. It's done really well, and I just enjoyed learning everything. So there's no age limit or time limit on anything. Jump in the deep end. So we've done that. We've, um, we've so the time limit, is one, the self-doubt and fear is another barrier that was on the second video, that was the last video. And I told you about, you know, different ways to think and change your mindset and also showed you how if you're not selling or you think some people don't like your work, it not it's not necessarily that your work isn't good, it's that they might just have other choices, that's all. So that hopefully will help you boost your confidence, just thinking about that. And it takes practice. So the third one, what we're gonna go into today in this video is about how to get unstuck. So many people say, I don't know what to do next. How do I know what the next step is? I don't know how to edit, so how am I gonna go through, I just get stuck here? Or how do you move through the so-called middle ugly stage. Um, I don't think of anything as an ugly stage. It's just a different stage. Why do we have to say ugly? Why can't we say it's just another stage? It's another layer. I'm somebody who is, I love putting lots and lots of layers on, on painting. So if something happens that I didn't really like, or I, um, I just say, oh, let's just do another layer, or let's just take out this part of the, thing, of the painting, or whatever. So it's about also being playful and bringing everything you have to having fun. So, but I wanna show you, I have been in this art business for 40 years, over, <laughs> over 40 years. And that's been a real plus because I've learned so much and practiced so much, so things are more second nature to me when I'm doing a painting. And so I have confidence in that, but it took me a long time to get there. And so what I wanna show you, some of my tips and tricks to editing, to moving through the middle stage onto another layer, and continuing to bringing playfulness and joy into your painting process is, we're going back to what we started in the first video, which is we did this speed painting, which I timed and we did this whole thing in 15 minutes. Now this is just a start, but how, say you're, here we are, you come back into the painting, or you started this, you went away for a while, you haven't been back in the studio and you wanna get those creative juices going, but what do you do? Let me show you two different ways that I use all the time and that really help me. Actually, three ways, three ways. I'm gonna start with the first way. The first way is collage papers. And sometimes when you put collage down, whether you glue it down and, and, and plan on having it in there, or you just are using it to help bring ideas or, or inspiration. Um, that's one way. And look, I wanna show you these papers. Look at all these papers. These are the papers that in the first video, I just wiped on my antique journal papers. And I can use them in this, you know, in this as collage in this piece if I want. I could say, okay, let's do this. Do I wanna have something over here? Do I wanna have something over here? How about down here or here? And I'm just gonna try a few things out because I may end up wanting to do this. Um, so this is like my first, I kind of like this bright blue, which is the highlight, one of the highlights. We have a lot of orange and we don't have a whole lot of this dark blue black, but I just love this piece right here. 
And one of the first things I talked about in the very first video is about variety. And also thinking in threes. If you think in threes with variety, you have almost all your problems solved just from those two things. And so with variety in this painting, getting unstuck is, okay, I've got this going here. So variety is I have this neutral um, background. I do have a little bit of this, but it's a little bit different color. Suppose I put it over here. So I'm trying it in different places all around the painting. Now, if I put it up here, I have uh, my eye comes up here. And so I'd have one, two, th three, thinking in threes, I would have it there. And you know what? I like it so much. I'm going to do that right now before I go on. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. This is just gloss medium. And I'm going to take a brush and I'm just going to brush this on and put it down. And sometimes I just hold these collage pieces over and it gives me a suggestion of where to put things. If I don't like something, that's fine too. But sometimes like this, it was I was sold. Sold right away. I'm going to do that. And when I typically look at something and I really like it, I don't ask myself or analyze all the questions. Is it this? Is it that? I like it. I'm going to put it down. Let me tear some of this off. This was some of the paper. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm putting it down. That's the great thing about having other pieces of paper that you wipe your paintings off. You wipe your, your, um, your brushes off with because the, pa the paint that you're using on this is exactly what you mixed on here. So it's perfect to have in collage. So that's one way. Okay, I didn't expect to have something so wonderful to begin with. Now, what's the second way? The second way is using prompts. Now, I love having prompts where I don't, I always try to not think too much and not analyze because it takes it out of that instinctual place and you start to get more analytical. And to me, that's where my confidence, uh, I start getting anxious and my confidence starts to go down. So if I just create, I have tons of different, um, you know, just different prompts that I have and I keep them on my table all the time and pull something out. I'm going to randomly pull something out. You can either respond to it. This says dots. So if I were to do that or not do that, sometimes I'll do what it says. Sometimes I'll do the opposite. Sometimes I won't use it at all, but I like that one. So I'm going to use that with dots. So um, let's see what I'm going to do with dots. I'm going to, I think I'm going to use this red china marker. So a dots, I'm just going to dots, dots, dots here. And so much of this is just adding more layers. The more layers you put down, the more interest and history you have. So like now, if you wanted to take out a whole section that you don't like, say you didn't like these this um, part right in here, you could put something over it. Let me see. Let me grab these back again. You could put something over it completely and take it away. But I happen to like that. I like variety. We've got dots. We've got lines. We have uh, blues and greens. We have dark value. We have light value. Our eye is moving all around the canvas. So we have the collage pieces that you can do. We have prompts that you can do to edit your painting or to get in there. Now the last one, the third one I want to show you is something that I love and that is so helpful. I use this on really every painting I do. I call them painting guides. And you can draw or paint with any marker or paint you have different shapes and lines and patterns on clear uh, sheet protectors. I use clear binder dividers. You can get them anywhere. But I have a whole bunch of different ones and I make marks. I'm just going to show you a couple of them. I have large shapes. I have different shapes. I have patterns like this. So I just pulled a couple of them and this is what I wanted to show you. You can take one and you can put it on your, on your canvas 
and see if you want to, not only do you like it on here, but where do you want it, if you do like it, on your painting? Do you want it down here? Do you want it this way? How about up here? So you can see, you keep moving it around until you go, yes, I love that. And then you do it. So I, that is with this painting guide. Let's do another painting guide. We have different shapes and they're all about the same size. So I'm kind of still looking for variety right now. This is certainly different than all the other things on here. It is a large shape. And even with this, you don't necessarily have to have it in the color that you have it on your painting guide. For me, do I like the red? Do I put it here? Actually, I kind of like the red. Um, it goes with everything else. It brings your eye here. And I'm, I'm naturally pulling it over to this side of the canvas because this is very strong. So to me, there's a balance. Suppose I put it over here. To me, instinctually, it feels uh, weighted on this side. Um, so if I move it around, how about here? What about coming off the page and just doing some of it? How about that? Or up here? So I really love this one. And I go through these and put, this is a yes. So I'm going to put this in the yes pile. Now, here's another big shape. This is an orange shape. Now, I wouldn't do it this color um, because I have so many, much of that already. But what about if I like this shape? It's like an exaggeration. I don't have a major exaggerated shape or pattern or something that stands out. This right now is the thing that stands out the most. So that's a no to me. I'm going to put that aside. So these are the two things that I like the most. So if I were to do this over here and maybe at this angle, maybe over here. Oh, I like it like this where it overlaps into this neutral area. I like overlapping. So I would say I'm going to leave this here and still think about it for a minute. And then what about this? If I did that, do I want some patterns? And if I want patterns, where would they be? I like this down here. And if I were to do more pattern, do I want something else? Well, let's just do one thing at a time. I am going to do this one. So I'm not quite sure what I used for this. Um, here is a... Um, oh, it's a solid marker by Sakura. I love these markers. And so I'm just going to draw, again, this is just an example. I'm going to draw something. It's going to go like here. Let's see what else I'll make. Sometimes I just hold it up like this. I wanted this to come up here, here, and something like this. I like that. I'm glad I did the red. Um, so, oops, let's see. So I like using um, markers, I like using paint, I like using the china markers, um, Posca pens. So that's that one. That one is done. So how about if we add something like this? And we don't have to use the whole thing. I'm going to use this, and here's a Posca marker. So I'm going to put, like just down here. I'm going to put some circles down here and I'm going to overlap here because I like overlap. Okay, going to bring your eye down here to the bottom. I like that. So we're just little by little adding something special. Um, and the last thing is, do I want to have some of this? Now I like, I love China marker. Um, oops, a black China marker, but you could use a red or a white china marker. I have all of them. You know, I have dark. I might try something here. I'm going to do something here, just a little mark like this. Okay, so I have that. Then, so I don't really need this. Now I'm going to go back and check one more time to see if there's something of the collage that I love that I want to do more of. Do I want, and I just hold it up. I don't want anything with the dark, but suppose I just did, tore it off and moved it over here. Do I want something over here or over here? Maybe I want it, maybe this is too big and you want to do something over here. Let's see. 
do you like this over here? Enough of this, so I'm putting that aside. See, you just go piece by piece. Oh, and look, okay, I have this on the back. This is from one of those papers. It wasn't from what I have here, but it was um, that I did in this in this video. But I like that. This is a great, actually, look at this. I love this down here. And I love it. It's at an angle. Do I like it this way? No, I think I like it this way. So I think I'm going to put it over here. This is probably going to be my very final piece to this. Now, is it done? I don't know. I, sometimes I really like to take my time and um, sit for a while, go away from the painting, and see how it resonates when I come back the next day. So I will just... Put this on here. There. So I want to show you, those are three different ways, collage, prompts, and painting guides. So this is the other thing. This is basically the end of, well, the end of giving these three videos, and I have a fourth video that I want you to see, and that's where I'm gonna explain and share a lot more information about my very unique, one-of-a-kind, comprehensive online art school. It's called the Art with Adele Academy. And what you've seen me present in the last three videos is just a tiny little piece of all the tips and techniques and secrets and methods, a lot of practical solutions for you to create, have breakthroughs in your art. So uh, uh, make sure you come see me tomorrow. We're going to join the video tomorrow and I'm going to go into a lot more detail. You do not want to miss out on this opportunity. I only open up the Academy just a few times a year. Sometimes it's three times, sometimes it two, it's two times, it might be one time, but you don't want to miss out on this because it is filled and very unique and I'm going to go into all kinds of detail and show you some of the tricks and tips and secrets that I share in my Art with Adele Academy. So thank you for joining and I'll see you in the next video.